Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Turning Point Series 2021. Today, we will talk about a uh, law program. And uh, my name is Jin Yi. I'm from JS Study Solutions in Seremban. Uh, I'm a student uh, advisor. And today, we are very honored to have our professional representative to share with you all about the introduction and future of a lawyer. And please stay with us until the end uh, because we will be also having an interesting session for you, which is uh, we will show some of the students from the this course to share with you, uh, to share uh, with you their testimony and also not forgetting about the Q&A at the end of this session. So this event is specially organized for you by Study Hub Student Advisory and JS Study Solutions. So as you all can see here, uh, we provide many services in relating to your tertiary education. So uh, don't worry, our education no counseling service is free of charge. We do not charge you any uh, service fee. So besides that, um, we also have several counseling uh, centers in Malaysia, including uh, Sabah in East Malaysia. Uh, please remember to contact our student advisors for more professional counseling and assistance in applying for university colleges in Malaysia and also overseas as well. Without any delays, I will now uh, would like to invite um, the speaker for today from Health University. Uh, she will share with you all about the topic on law. And we welcome uh, Ms. Wasanta. She is the Dean of Faculty of Law and Government in uh, Health University, uh, Malaysia. So we welcome uh, Ms. Wasanta to share with us today. Uh, welcome. Ms. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me here this afternoon. A pleasure to be here. Can I share my screen now? Yes, you may share your screen. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, we can. Hear. All right. Okay. I'm here this afternoon to share with you all some of my experience and uh, also the future of law graduates and what you could do with a law degree. Now, before I go into details of what we do at HELP, I want you to understand where I'm coming from, okay? Um, when I started reading law back in the mid eighties, um, we didn't have much choice in Malaysia on uh, the type of uh, colleges or universities. There, there were not many um, preparing us for law school. And so, I did the London external program and uh, I read law um, and then I did the Malaysian bar, which is the certificate in legal practice. And then I came out into practice. Um, I was in practice for more than six years before. And whilst I was in practice, I was also teaching part time. I was teaching the London external students and I was teaching the CLP papers as well. And then finally, I decided to uh, go full time into academia. And I was teaching part-time uh, in HELP. So after that, in 1999, I joined HELP as a full-time staff, uh, as a lecturer, as a senior lecturer after that. And then I became the head of department in 2004 and the dean in 2007. So why we do what we do in HELP is simply because I need you all to understand that the practice of law itself um, is all about practical skills. It's not about textbook knowledge. And we always use the term reading law. We don't say studying law, all right? We don't say I'm studying law in, uh, in health or I'm studying law in University of Malaya. I'm reading law. That's the right term to use. Why? Probably because you're all the time reading and trying to grasp the principles and applying the actual uh, skills. And why IR 4.0? I hope all of you have already heard the term IR 4.0. IR simply means industrial revolution. We have gone through a series of industrial revolution uh, from way back from many uh, years ago. And now we are currently in the industrial revolution 4.0, heading towards industrial revolution 5.0 with a lot of artificial intelligence. So where do lawyers come in? And I will explain that in just a bit. So to start off with, what are the skills that law graduates must have? Um, number one, the ability to research. 
Okay, that's very, very important. Forget about rote learning. Forget about lecturer or teacher knows best. Now, if you come from a traditional school system, it's always about, okay, teacher telling you this, preparing you for exams, you are passing of exams. And that is exactly the life I went through uh, as an external student. Somebody was having the exams in, in the UK and somebody was sitting for the exams here taught by a third party. Uh, so there was no interaction between the examiner and the students. There was no understanding about whether they, what the examiner is saying, whether that coverage, uh, whether all the entire syllabus has been properly covered and whether the student has understood and whether the student is well prepared for the exams. So it's all external. It's all like a blank face there. You don't see the person. Um, so it's very, very important to understand that the ability to research is so important because what you will be doing once you enter university, once you are doing a law degree, for the three years that you will be pursuing a law degree, the actual skills that you require is number one, where to look for the law. Once you know where to look for the law, you must know how to read it and understand it. That's point number two. Once you know how to read it and you have understood it, the third most important thing is to apply it. Because a client has come to you with a problem. A client has come to you because he's stuck. Okay, he's been charged for murder or he's been charged for fraud or, or there's a breach of contract. He has sold a car and now the guy has not paid him the money. What happens? So he's come to you with a problem. So you need to know what is the law revolving that problem and how you want to help him resolve the problem, isn't it? People come to us with problems for us to solve it for them. So we need to apply the law and help them find the best solution, okay? The best solution for them, okay? So there are many solutions possibly, but you need to identify what would be the best solution and then let the client decide, is this what they really want? So uh, reading, finding the law, reading and understanding the law and applying the law, okay? These are the most important skills that you must have. And that is why the ability to research becomes the utmost important skill for any law student to have. Advocacy skills are very important for you to be able to speak, okay? And for you to know how to address the bench. When I say address the bench, that means to address the judge. How do you address your co-counsel in court? How do you pose your questions to the witnesses? Um, you can forget about all these uh, suits and all this um, US drama that you see on, on uh, TV, because in Malaysia, because we were colonized by the British, we follow the English uh, legal system, okay, the advocacy system. And therefore, we are at the table. We don't walk around the courtroom. No such drama, huh? walking around the courtroom, standing next to the witness and talking. No, we stand at our desk, the, the, the uh, counsel's uh, place, and then we address the witnesses and the judge. And we don't have a jury. We have uh, done away with jury trials back in the 80s itself. Okay, uh, so now it's all about just judge alone, huh? um, as the uh, person who knows the law, who will be judging on the facts presented before them. And how do we speak in court? You know, um, addressing the court, you have to speak respectfully. And uh, how do you dress up in court? Um, you need to know that for high court and above, we wear the bib and the robe. I will, I've got pictures to show you later. Um, what's most important is how do you speak to the judge? How do you address him? There was one judge when I met him for tea over a, a, a convocation ceremony, and he said that that particular morning when he was in court, he was really shocked when one of the junior lawyers stood up and said, bang, bang, tolong panggil ke saya dulu. Can you imagine uh, addressing a judge as bang, a bang? I mean, that's so unheard of. I was shocked. Where did this guy graduate from? You know, you have to know how to address them. Is it your honor? Is it my lord, my lady? Um, so different ranks, you have got different ways of addressing them. Yeah, so advocacy skills are very important to speak with clarity, to ask a question so that the witness has heard you clearly, the judge has an opportunity to understand, the co-counsel can uh, hear you as well. Clarity of speech is also very, very important. Drafting skills are also important because you have to draft as a lawyer, you have to draft letters, you have to draft court documentations, you have to draft uh, legal agreements and things like that. Entrepreneur skills are equally important now because as a lawyer, you, know, you may be um, an employee of a law firm, a large law firm or a medium-sized 
law firm or a small firm. Uh, as an employee, even, um, we used to um, visit clients because we want the business to come in. So good entrepreneur skills are important as well. And that's also one of the ways for you to go up the ladder to become an equity partner as well. Um, good command of the Bahasa in English is equally good because uh, or relevant because uh, in our courts here, we use both languages, Bahasa and English. Documents are also uh, filed in bilingual. Um, the right aptitude and attitude. Aptitude is something that the law school the lecturers are there for you. They will guide you and show you what you need to do, how you need to do it. But attitude comes back to your own individual uh, attitude. What is it that you want in your life? Uh, what are your priorities in life? Um, do you want to work hard? Because if you work hard, you have the right attitude, um, then the chances of being uh, hired and, and being made a permanent staff and also to be promoted is good. But if you're going to just look at it as, oh, well, it's just a nine to five job. I just want my money and I go home. Um, believe me, that's not going to happen. Yeah? Understanding IR 4.0 and the law involving AI, artificial intelligence, and its legal and ethical implications are equally important now. I will explain that to you. Now, we all are in this uh, global pandemic issue of this uh, COVID-19, right? And it started off in March uh, 2020. We went into our first MCO on the 18th of March, 2020. Uh, and so our court to be done because courts were closed. People couldn't come to court physically. And so for the first time, it was a Harini Dalam Sajara moment for Malaysia uh, on April 23rd, 2020, when our court of appeal had its uh, appellate hearing uh, virtual, online. And so even... Um, I had logged in, some of my students had logged in, some of my lecturers also logged in to um, follow through uh, the appeal. So it was very, very interesting. Um, so this was what was recorded, uh, reported in the newspaper as well, about how there was a three-man court of appeal bench with lawyers and registrar all going online uh, and uh, using their homes and offices to go through the appeal. Now, appeals are different from actual trials. Huh? Appeals are where there's a trial, uh, the decision has been uh, read, and now one of the parties is appealing against that decision. Whereas a trial is a first time hearing. That means you have your witnesses, you have to go through the whole motion of uh, examination in chief, cross-examination of all the various witnesses, etc. So that's difficult online because like for now, you can't see me, right? I have not got my video on uh, simply because uh, my video is spoiled, but uh, my camera is spoiled. But let's say if there's a trial going on, and even if you could see my face, how do you know if I was a witness that somebody is not giving me a slip of paper with all the answers to read out? I mean, these are things that we always look out for in an actual hearing. When we, in, we are in a physical court and we put the witness on the stand, the witness is not supposed to look at any um, paper or notes or etc. unless with the court's uh, approval, because they're supposed to tell you the facts as they remember it. Yeah, so these are the, some of the nuances that we find uh, online hearings can, can be a bit of a problem, uh, but we have had it, we've done it. In the industrial courts had their first virtual trial in August, 2020, Lee Hishamudin, uh, the firm, law firm, huh, actually published this in their newsletter as well. So this is the way forward. Um, some of you may have already had online classes with your SPM uh, exams being delayed as well, which is most unfortunate, but this is it. This is the way everybody is going ahead. So we are here to ensure that all our students are tax savvy enough to be able to handle um, online trials, online appeals. Uh, how do we prepare ourselves for this? And not to forget all the legal and ethical um, what do you call it, uh, the, the ethical issues that is involved for a, uh, for a lawyer, it's still the same, whether you're using AI or not. AI actually, artificial intelligence is actually already here. We have uh, our library all online now. Our students are so lucky. You don't have to go through what I went through. You don't have to go to a library and look for journals or dusty journals, look for the right page, 
photocopy all, you know, uh, one for the judge, one for the opposing lawyer, one for yourself. You don't have to do that anymore. Everything now is on a click of a button. And they will even give you the summary of oh, this particular case was referred to in case A, B, C, D, E. So you can also look at that. You don't have to have that the problem of going and looking for all this anymore because it's all there at a click of a button. So AI here is, is already here to enable us eh, to, to minimize our time in how we conduct ourselves and how we do our research. And so technology has made it so much easier. But the ethical principles that bind every lawyer is still the same. Okay, we owe our duty of care to our clients. Um, chatbots, I don't know how many of you have heard of chatbots. Um, chatbots are online uh, applications where you can go in and without seeking a lawyer's advice, because sometimes lawyer's advice can be a bit pricey uh, and some, people, some lay people may not be able to afford it or they may just want a simple question and answer thing, you know, I've been stopped by the police, what do I do? What do I give them? Do I have to show them my IC? Do I have to follow them to the bar line? What does it mean? Or if I want to enter into a sale and purchase agreement, what do I need to have? Uh, what are the technical terms that I need to ensure? So these are simple chatbots. And our law students have already started creating these chatbots in class. Yeah. So the issue arises, um, can lawyers be replaced by robots? Maybe at some point in time, I'm not sure. But most of the articles that you Google and you can research and look at it, it still says that we need lawyers. Uh, lawyers can't be replaced by robot lawyers. This is in the article that I gave the link earlier. Um, they free our time so that we don't have to manually look for information anymore. It's all there, the click of the button. But at the same time, I doubt we are going to be replaced anytime soon. We still need lawyers. Uh, to uh, speak in court, and even simple things like um, sale and purchase agreement. A lot of people think uh, that um, buying and selling a house is very easy. You just need to have a standard agreement. Anybody can pick up a standard sale and purchase agreement, sign it, and we've got a, a legal agreement. It's so not true. Because each buyer and each seller may have individual or specific terms and conditions attached to their sale and purchase. So I may, if I'm selling a house, I may specify certain uh, conditions before I give my house. And the buyer may have certain conditions or the buyer may be looking for a bank loan and the buyer may, may not be able to meet the timeline that the banks normally need to process. They may need more time because there's some other complications involved. So a standard uh, sale and purchase agreement doesn't work. Huh? One size doesn't fit all. Yeah, so we need to understand this. And I have all this, this problem with uh, people asking this question. Oh, you guys are simply charge me for a simple sale and purchase agreement. Believe me, it's not that simple. Yeah. So there are uh, AI in other fields like medical negligence issues as well, where they use a lot of uh, uh, legal technologies and uh, semi robots as well. But the legal and ethical implications involved is still very much current. The law has not evolved that fast to uh, review all the ethical and legal issues. So what is it that uh, the reality about law school? Law school doesn't teach you to be a lawyer. It teaches you how to think like a lawyer. Now, going back in time, I just want to share this experience with you because huh? I told you I was an external student. So I went through uh, college and uh, as an external student, I passed my exams and I went through and did my CLT, which is also an external program. OK, um, and then when I came into uh, legal practice, I had to do my chambering, my pupillage for nine months. I joined a really good law firm and a very supportive uh, legal assistants there who helped me a lot. And when I used to follow them to court and I, when I used to be sitting in with, uh, uh, with them for meetings and all that, I realized that law school didn't prepare me for the real world. I didn't understand the language they spoke. I didn't understand the lingo or the terms they, they used because all that I went through is textbook knowledge, is reading up the textbooks, making sure I've done some past questions, making sure I am prepared for exams and making sure I pass my exams. But no practical skills. I didn't have the opportunity to draft agreements. I didn't have any advocacy training, uh, mood courts, nothing, nothing, zero, okay? 
So I felt that this is a real raw deal that I ended up with. And luckily, I had good lawyers who helped me. And I was very hungry and thirsty for knowledge. I went all out to, to learn. Despite having a degree and having my CLP cert, I actually started learning on the first day of my diploma. That's how I built myself up at that point in time. Law school actually should teach you to think like a lawyer. I grew up on this uh, television series known as Paper Chase. Um, you all are way too young for this. Uh, when Paper Chase uh, was shown on TV, um, it's actually a la Harvard Law School. So it's a series that, that uh, shows you that how law school actually is in Harvard. And uh, there is this Professor Kingsfield um, who supposedly teaches um, contract law. And so he tells all his first year students this standard line. He says, you come in here with a skull full of mush and you leave thinking like a lawyer. Because that is how, that is what law schools are supposed to do. Make you think like a lawyer. So if you go into criminal law class, you have to think like a prosecutor or you have to think like a defense counsel. So there's a murder case here. What is the prosecutor going to do? What are the evidence that the prosecution is going to bring? And if I'm the defense counsel, how am I going to rebut the prosecution's case? What are the evidence I need to look out for for my client? Because my client deserves the right to a fair trial. Yeah. So we want all our students to think like a lawyer in every class. Okay. It's not about textbook knowledge. So law school will teach you to think and write logically, to speak persuasively, to argue effectively, not lawyer buro. Yeah. We don't want simply making noise with no facts, no evidence. That's nonsense. It's, it's uh, meaningless eh? to research and read meticulously. That's so important. All right. So we don't believe in rote learning. We don't believe in spoon feeding our students because when you go out into the real world, you need to be prepared for that. So what are the half truths here? I need to debunk some of these things. The market for lawyers is already saturated. It's so not true because law degree doesn't just open for a law practice. You can go into any other field. You can go into the business field. You can go into journalism, oil and gas, banking industry. I mean, the world is your oyster. Seriously, everybody needs a lawyer. And even as a lawyer, if you're going into business, you will be able to read your own business contracts. You will be, you will have the, the, the right skills, the critical thinking skills honed whilst you're in law school. So you become sharper and you understand uh, and you can read between the lines and understand, hey, this guy is being a bit shrewd there. He's trying to be cunning. Okay, I can see through what he's trying to sell me here. All right, so it makes you sharper in that sense. And the downside that it's a lot of hard work. Now, please tell me which course or which work or which field doesn't demand hard work. Yeah, from those who are laboring in the fields, in the construction sites, to engineering, to medicine. I mean, look at our doctors today. Look at our frontliners, you know, all dressed up in that PPE suit. You know how difficult that is? They can't even take a the time off to go to the bathroom. They have to remove layers and layers and layers of plastic before they can even go to the bathroom. It is nothing that is going to be easy or free in life. It is all involves hard work, but you need to be passionate about it. If you are passionate about it, you won't find it hard work, okay? It won't be a chore. If you love chocolate cake, you would love to eat it, right? But if you don't like chocolate cake and then you're forced to eat chocolate cake, it will be like um, eating chalk right? Or sawdust. Um, so you must be passionate. You must be committed in whatever you're doing. Then it becomes a pleasure, not a pressure. Yeah? You can't do anything else with a law degree except practice law. This is so not true because there's a demand for lawyers as in-house lawyers or as advisors in every sector, in every sector. So for those who are looking at not wanting to practice law, you have the combination law and a master's in business administration you don't need a business degree to become a businessman all right you but the law and an mba puts you or, or places you in really good stead law and human resource management that's a great field um i always tell this tale of uh, to, to potential students and even to my current students i have a friend in fact he's my husband's classmate and uh, he did law with us same time as us he graduated same time as us 
And then he didn't go into practice. He did the CLT with me as well, but he didn't go into practice. He went straight into uh, GE, General Electric. And he was very well trained. He, he joined the human resource department and he went up uh, rank and file in uh, GE. And then later he went and joined uh, Rolls-Royce and so many other uh, good corporate companies uh, as a human resource manager, uh, very senior. In fact, he was a vice president and he retired in, in when he was only what, 44, 45 years old, um, rich enough. <laughs> He's got more money than I have. Um, maybe I did not choose the right career myself. But uh, interestingly, he did really, really well. A law in economic crime management. Economic crime management is a wonderful master's to have if you want to join the banking industry or even the police force, because then you're going after white collar crime. Yeah? So it's really interesting um, to look at these uh, prospects. And these are just some of the things that I'm looking at. There's also oil and gas. Um, in fact, one of my classmates, uh, Ms. Sitpa Selvaratnam, we were in uh, Conan Bukitnanas together, and she was the, uh, the, the lady who arrested Jolo's yacht, if you remember, Equanimity, yeah? because she was in the shipping. Uh, she specialized in shipping, uh, marine law. And so, so, so there's just so many areas of specialization that you could look at. So law is not just for practice. Yeah? Now, what are the entry requirements you need to consider if you are looking at law? you need to have at least five SPM credits or any uh, uh, equivalent uh, qualifications. UEC is recognized, the senior middle three for the Chinese uh, medium school. And the uh, Malaysian programs, it's always a three-year degree program for Bachelor of Law. And you have to either then do your bar in England or the CLP in Malaysia. So if you do a UK transfer program, then you can stay back in UK to do the bar uh, in England. So you come back as a barrister at law. Or if you've done the CLP like myself, then you are known as an advocate and solicitor. Title doesn't matter because we all do the same type of work. Now, why help university for law? Our mission statement has always been to groom employable lawyers and now more so for, to prepare you for the industrial revolution 4.0. Help, H-E-L-P is actually an acronym. I don't know how many of you actually realize this, but it, it's, we started off in uh, April, 1986 as h.e.l.p. meaning higher education learning program back in 1986. And then when we attained university college and then later full university status, our vice chancellor who actually coined this uh, acronym, H-E-L-P, he converted that to higher education learning philosophy. Yeah, um, so it's not Institute Tholong or University Tholong. I know we, uh, we are made as a joke sometimes, but uh, it's actually an acronym. And then we had, for one of our law balls, we had a retired judge, uh, Justice Lao Hop Beng, who came in as our VIP, as our guest of honor. And he looked at HELP and he said, oh, interestingly, it also stands for honor and excellence in the legal profession. It's quite nice, isn't it, of him to have coined that for us. So what is it that we do? We emphasize a whole deal on research. And we are the only ones who started off way back in 2001, practical skill modules known as legal skills and legal practice. And now we have incorporated legal tech. So in legal skills and legal practice modules, which are taught purely by practitioners and not, not by us, because you know, I left uh, legal practice in 1998, 99. So and these are all taught by practitioners. Huh? And so we introduce you to client counseling. That means when you meet a client, how to ask them the right questions, how to understand their problem. And then after that, of course, you uh, do your research and you advise. So client counseling is very important. Uh, the first time when I did, uh, when I met a client, when my boss asked me to do this, I was just merely taking down notes. So I was not able to ask them the right questions because I didn't know how to ask the right question. And that's very important. It's a very important skill because if you don't ask the right questions and then suddenly something crops up in court and you look at your client and say, hey, you didn't tell me this. The client will turn around and say, but you didn't ask me. How am I supposed to know that this was important for you, right? So client counseling is important. Negotiation is important because not everything is settled in court. Sometimes the matter is too uh, sensitive or it's a business issue. You don't want uh, negative publicity for your client, so you want to settle it. 
uh, even things like medical negligence. I don't know whether you read in the newspapers uh, sometime last year where two doctors had performed an operation on a, on a lady and accidentally left behind an instrument in her abdomen, which became septic and she was in severe pain. I don't know why those uh, two doctors, it was a public uh, hospital. It was not a private hospital, it was a public hospital. Private hospital, mind you, they would have immediately negotiated and settled it. They would not have had um, negative publicity. But these two uh, doctors denied liability and it went up right up to court and it came out in the papers. Their names were published in the papers. And finally, they, were, they admitted liability and they closed the case. Uh, and settled uh, with the with the client. So these kind of cases, normally we will never want negative publicity. So negotiation skills are equally important. Uh, sometimes uh, people also go for mediation, uh, which is known as these are some of the alternative dispute resolution methods that we have. So we have client counseling, negotiation, advocacy skills, uh, showing them how to robe, how do you dress up for court sessions and all that. And how do you do mootings? Mootings are, are moot sessions are actually appeal matters. Huh? So we teach them on trial advocacies and also on moot uh, advocacy skills as well. Um, our vice chancellor has been very gracious in allowing all students to pursue the certificate in uh, data analytics as well. Because like I said, this is the legal tech era. So you need to understand some of these terminologies as well. And these certificates are thrown in for free. We have our own in-house publications uh, where the students uh, edit and uh, research and publish their own articles under the Student Law Journal. This is Allah Harvard Law Review, where Obama was the editor-in-chief during his time when he was in Harvard. So similarly, help students have already been doing this since 2008. We have a study skill series that helps all new students coming in because you come with A-levels background, or UEC background, or foundation background, or metric class C, or any background, you must be able to understand how we teach and how to read the law. How do you look at your statutes? How do you look at the textbook and understand? Because sometimes the legal terminologies can be a bit of a bother. Um, it's not as simple as reading a novel or a storybook, right? So we will teach you all this and we will train you on how to answer essay questions and problem questions or preparing assignments, preparing for project works, et cetera. Yeah? Problem-based uh, learning and case studies are part of our, part of our methodology that we use, uh, wherein you need to understand that there's a problem and how to find solutions. In fact, good universities in the UK started using PBL way back, uh, more than 10, 15 years now, even in medical school. So they have less and less face-to-face -face lectures. Face-to-face -face lectures is actually irrelevant in the current uh, situation, even uh, in the current era. Uh, and they started doing this way back in the 90s even, uh, wherein they don't have as much lectures, but instead they give you a problem. So they bring you to the lab, uh, they show you a person or a live person, or it could be a, 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 a corpse. Uh, and then they tell you, this is a problem, now you find a solution. So if a patient were to come in with, uh, let's say stomachache, what could be the diagnosis? So stomachache can be anything, right? So it's very wide. Then they narrow the scopes in week two. Stomach ache plus vomiting, or stomach ache plus vomiting plus diarrhea or whatever. So if the, the scope becomes narrower, then your, your um, diagnosis becomes more clear, right? So similarly for law, we want you to understand, okay, we give you a case study or we give you a scenario and you have to look at it. So if this A is said to have stabbed B, like a murder trial or, or any in any given situation, we give you a problem, then you have to look at what are all the pos possible issues relating here and how would the prosecution attack this case? How would the defense counsel defend themselves and look at possible solutions? So PPL is the best way to learn. And we even include peer teaching uh, from time to time as well, wherein we give you a simple um, area of the law, you read up and you teach your classmates. It's the best way. I mean, I've done this before when I was teaching and I, found, I always found that when they had to do peer teaching, they always understood the topic far better and they remembered it far longer as well, yeah? So this is a picture of our lecturer who's uh, the gentleman in, in white. He's a practitioner and he's also one of our alumni. Uh, he teaches legal skills. 
and he is helping the students uh, understand how to create chatbots. Huh? Now, these are the two programs that we have, two pathways, UK Degree Transfer Program and the Help Bachelor of Laws or Help LLB. So our partners, we have 10 partners, very reputable partners. We have Manchester, Sheffield, School of Oriental and African Studies, which is SOAS in London, uh, Cardiff, also very well-known uh, law school. We have uh, University of the West of England, Bristol, in Bristol itself, uh, Leeds, Aberystwyth in Wales, Liverpool, Northumbria, and Hertfordshire. So wide range of uh, universities for you to choose from, depending on your how well you do with us on a one plus two, two plus one. And our help LLB is all three years with us. It's Malaysian law, it's not UK law, but we do uh, analysis with UK, Australia, and other areas in the region. We also incorporate legal skills and legal practice modules. All in, it's only 69,000 ringgit. Okay, it's so, so affordable because the reason why we have priced it at 69,000 ringgit is to make it affordable to show you students that this is comparable to London External or any other external program. And it's a holistic program. Okay, I don't want my students to go through what I went through in my life. It was tough. It was so tough, okay? But uh, things were different back in the 80s and 90s, and life is different today. Uh, expectations of the law firms are very much more different compared to my time. Uh, during my time, as long as you have got a degree and you've got your certificate in legal practice, these are two pieces of paper that you need to have to go for an interview. But now, lawyers are asking, so what skills do you have? Uh, what exposure have you done? Where have you worked? Have you done any internship? Have you uh, uh, prepared any documents in the past? Uh, how good is your research skills? They start asking you all this. You need to prove your, to your employers or potential employers in an interview why they should choose you and not somebody else. There could be 100 applications uh, or applicants in an interview for just maybe two positions or even one, right? So you need to prove yourself. So. Um, your, your certificates are testimonial of, your, of what you have, uh, the knowledge that you have, but the other certificates that you gather, your internships, your experience, legal skills and all that, will help you beyond uh, the norm, yeah? This is something that is, uh, uh, students of mine who have come back to tell us that they were so happy that they did the legal skills and legal practice modules with us. Uh, these are pictures of our students who have gone to Parliament because we are in Damansara. We are just a stone's throw away from the Parliament House. Um, so we have taken them so that you understand constitutional law better. We have Lake Gardens so close. We don't need to have our own gardens. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, guys, I want you to understand one thing. A campus is just brick and mortar. And now we are all online. We are in the legal tech era. I mean, we are in technology era. IR 4.0, the brick and mortar is no longer important. Uh, campus is no longer relevant. I mean, I would still like to have you face to face on campus talking to you all rather than like this on a screen, but this is the way forward already. The whole world is moving in this direction. Cambridge and Oxford is moving in this direction. So we all have to, to, to uh, move in this direction to stay current. Yeah, so we have lake gardens. We do take our students for activities, uh, collaborative uh, activities and fun and games where staff also participate. Uh, this is our mood court. And uh, that's me uh, acting as a judge. Um, we have international students and local students participating in this mock trial. We purposely did it as, um, as a jury trial simply because we had A-level students and others uh, and because jury, uh, the question about jury and the importance of jury under the UK uh, degree transfer program is still relevant because UK is still considering is jury relevant or should we do away with the system? That is a system that we uh, uh, back in the 80s, mid 80s. Huh? When I started doing trials, I didn't have any jury trials anymore as well. Uh, mine was all before the judge alone. So these are some of these pictures. Uh, these are students preparing for a mood competition. They are gone for mood competitions at national level. Uh, this is also a mood competition picture. Uh, um, we couldn't get our alumni to come in today because there were last minute trials uh, that they had to attend. So that is why I have got 
some of these slides here to share with you what they have said. This is Shabna. Shabna is one of our students who did the uh, help Bachelor of Laws. Uh, and uh, she graduated in 2014. Um, she's done very well for herself. She was uh, formerly with the Consumers Association. She went uh, up in the rank and file in this uh, consumer tribunal. And um, she even did breakfast talks. She has come on TV. She has come on radio. Um, she's done very well. And now she has just joined the Federation of um, Investment Managers of Malaysia, FIMM. So she's the senior legal counsel there, uh, in-house legal advisor with them now. Yeah, and so this is what she had to say. Yeah, uh, I must give credit to the lecturers who always go beyond their call of duty to offer their support. They value our opinion and encourage us to think out of the box, a skill that I certainly developed at HELP. Besides that, the syllabus and programs conducted by HELP has prepared us to face the real world. Okay, so um, she also stresses on the legal research, negotiation skills, mediation, etc. Right. Uh, this is Tripajit Singh. He went to Cardiff on the uh, 2 plus 1 uh, a UK degree transfer program. And he also has been a great supporter. He even introduced his cousin and friends to us as well because he truly believes in us. He even sent a nice uh, message the other day on May 16th for Teacher's Day, wishing me Happy Teacher's Day. Uh, so it was really nice to uh, have feedback from our alumni. Yeah? Um, this is another uh, lady who did our two plus, uh, one plus two with Manchester, Hannah. So she also says, I also cannot stress enough the relevance of the legal skills course in health, which is unique to health in building strong practical and field work skills in law students. This is all something that they've written voluntarily. Yeah? You can meet them at some point and ask them yourselves. Uh, not something that we have written. Huh? They themselves have forwarded all this to us. Uh, Junta also has said this, the law lecturers, very helpful and professional and uh, legal skills and practice modules which only offered in health law program are particularly useful for all students. And in fact, I have got students who come back to me to tell me that they did far better and they got distinction in their bar exams because they already have the fundamental knowledge after going through the legal skills and legal practice at help. Uh, Gail Brook as well, and uh, Farhan. Farhan is actually the son of the late federal court judge, uh, Justice Abdul Malik. And uh, he did uh, law with us. His cousin is Lisa Surihani. I'm sure you all know her, the actress. She also did uh, her law degree with help. Huh? And so these are some of their testimonials that they have written to us. And uh, Christy, the lady on the right, uh, Christy Liao, uh, she was a UEC student who joined us. And then later she went on to UWE. And uh, she also had a prize award, internship prize award from uh, Messias Othman Hashim and co. And she uh, graduated with the first class honors. And I was so pleased because I was also in UWE that day for the graduation ceremony and uh, to watch her uh, go up to the, the platform and get her first class honors degree from the chancellor. It gave me so much pleasure to see my student there. And on the left is Vanessa who did the UKDC as well. She says, I have no regrets in choosing health. Huh? My name is Gail Brook. I studied in HELP University from years 2008 to 2010 and um, I did the law degree, the UK transfer degree. I'm currently attached to the Attorney General's Chambers, Putrajaya. The very high levels of discipline instilled by the lecturers helped me in my job on a day-to-day -day basis because my work requires me to be highly focused and keep very strictly to deadlines. And so the very high levels of discipline instilled by the lecturers has helped me in my career. Also, the lecturers instill a very high standard, very high standards in me in terms of academic achievements, and that has stayed with me till today. And I give my best in everything that I do in my work. You get very good quality of lecturers, and the methods of teaching are really, really effective. The 
universities that they transfer us to in the UK are really good universities and uh, you get a very good exposure not just academically but in terms of meeting people and um, gaining new experiences. Okay, now a little bit of the court attire. This is what uh, you wear when you go to a high court. Um, the courts below magistrate sessions court, you just have to wear a black coat, white shirt or white blouse for the ladies and uh, white uh, black skirt or black pants. Huh? For the guys, of course, pants. For the ladies, you can use skirt or pants. During my time, only skirt, huh? no pants were allowed. And for high court and above, you have to wear the black robe on top of your black coat. It looks like a graduation robe, but there's a bit of a difference, I'll show you. And you have to use the white bib around your neck. Why are we using all this? It's because traditionally in England, they started using this. The history goes back to the church. Okay, if you look at the, the dressing, it looks more like the, the, the church uh, pastors, uh, how they used to dress up. So whilst it looks like the graduation robe, there's a bit of a difference and this is symbolic. You see where I put the smiley face? That's actually a pouch. And uh, before that, in front, actually, there is a sash for you to pull that pouch. Of course, all this is already sewn on. Eh? You can't really pull it anymore. But it's symbolic to show that this is a noble profession. The barristers in England are not interested in the money. Whatever money the client puts into the pouch, they will accept. Because it is a pedigree thing. Eh? If my grandfather was a barrister, my father is a barrister, the son or the daughter will become a barrister because they come from the noble pedigree family. Okay, it's not about the money. So this is just symbolic. We are not like that. We are not lords of some manor in, in, in uh, England, uh, in some country uh, house in England. Yeah, We are common people who are able to do a law degree and who are able to do the bar course or come back and do the CLP. But this is just symbolic to show you all that we are not just here for the money. It is a noble profession. Um, they wear the... Um, the, the um, wig as well. But in Malaysia, we have done away with a wig. Um, Tun Saleh Abbas, when he was the Lord President, he said that we don't need to follow every tradition that England has. We don't need to have a wig. And so uh, we've done away with that. Yeah? In fact, the lady on the right, Charlene Tan, is one of our former students as well. We have done a lot of seminars. Um, we have brought in uh, chief uh, uh, VIPs to come and talk, like uh, Dr. Ma Wen Kwai, who is also our industrial advisory board uh, advisor um, and practitioners, to talk on interesting topics like abolishing the death penalty. Is Malaysia ready? We have a um, law conference for students. Huh? We, of course, the lecturers and uh, practitioners and all attend law conferences, but student law conference is a unique one again that we have started in health wherein the students hold a law conference for students, by students. So the students research and present papers. And uh, we have had uh, seniors like Justice, uh, former Justice Gopal Sriram, who's now a practitioner back, uh, the retired federal court judge who gave the keynote address. The, after him was uh, Dr. Ambiga as well. Huh? But now because of the pandemic, we have put this on hold. Huh? Now, before I um, say thank you and uh, stop speaking, I've been talking to you all for so long. Uh, I also want to share Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, what I picked up from them on their Facebook uh, page. Get relevant experience while in school. You see, they're also saying the same thing as what I'm telling you. It's no more about textbook knowledge. You need to have the practical exposure. You need to have the practical skills. And of course, you can go for internship. But when you go for internship, you go for one month, two months. You don't see a file from beginning to end. You may have joined the law firm when it is at closing stage of the file. Or you may have joined the law firm at the beginning stage of your file. And that's it. So you don't get to see the full picture. So our legal skills and legal practice modules will help you a lot more. Yeah. So my parting words would be, my rich dad did not teach me a specific subject. Instead, he taught me how to learn and what to learn. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me uh, this afternoon. That's my email address. If you'd like to contact me, please do. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing. 
My name is Ravin Singh. I did my first year law at health and second year in 2002-2003. I went off to England, got my degree, uh, became a barrister and returned to Malaysia. Uh, initially, I started off work uh, with uh, a few law firms and eventually in 2010, I opened my own law firm and uh, that's where I'm currently practicing. And uh, over and above that, I am the State Bar Representative from Kuala Lumpur to the Bar Council, as well as an ex-official of the Kuala Lumpur Legal Aid Centre and a member of the National Legal Aid Foundation Steering Committee. Currently, I run my own law firm uh, together with my partner. It's a um, Mrs. Vin Partnership. Well, I got my degree from um, Health University. Back then, it used to be called Health, in Health Institute. Um, well, it's definitely helped me because all my friends um, who I studied with are now currently all my colleagues. That we work together till today. The education it helped is, um, was a good education that we received and um, of course the opportunity to go overseas with our first two years of experience and help uh, was a great benefit as well. Um, a lot of hands-on work, that's perhaps how we benefited. Well, there, um, there are several benefits. I would say that um, one, the fact that your lecturers uh, were actually practicing lawyers at one time. So you actually get very real examples and live situations of uh, cases and the discussion is very, not just theoretical, but also practical. Other benefits I must say is the fact that a lot of the colleagues which I had uh, when I studied in health and doing law are, like I said earlier, my colleagues now in legal practice. So networking was that's definitely one of the benefits that we received. Uh, over and above that, I would have to say that uh, I've seen none, I've not seen any of my colleagues from health who did law at health um, who hasn't succeeded today. Everyone, everyone from my class is uh, doing quite well actually, some are doing extremely well. And um, so I, I would definitely say that the law degree we received from health um, has definitely benefited us to a large extent. Alright, thank you so much Miss Masanta for your sharing uh, on on your experiences and many uh, insights about law and I hope students you all have gained a lot of insights here and now I would like to pass the time to Miss Janice she would like to share with you all the upcoming activity uh, from HELP Universities so Miss Janice you can yeah share with us yeah okay due to the Time constraint, like I think I would just say the tertiary, okay. Uh, because we give away very attractive bursary to students. Uh. So regarding the program offered and any course inquiry, uh, later on you all can contact me as well, or you can contact Study Hub or JS Study Solution. Okay, because we offer apart from law, also we are famous for many other courses. Okay. Okay, so this is a bursary for this year. Uh, so for any student who join our foundation program, I will automatically be eligible for this 20% scholarship. If they continue with our degree, right, they are eligible for the first year 25%, second year and third year 20%. And also uh, for any student who join or any of our help academy or help university diploma program during the first year, they are eligible for this 20%. Bursary. And they also have the subsidized trip during your degree, uh, the degree uh, final year. Okay. And for those who already completed their uh, foundation in other colleges or universities, like, okay, we will still give you 10% uh, of this bursary if you join our degree to our degree year one. Okay. And MCL students, right, you are eligible for the 30% of bursary, SDPM student as well. SDPM and UEC graduates, uh, you are eligible for the first year, uh, 25%, and then second year and third year, 20%. Uh, okay. And also our diploma in early childhood education and diploma in education, you are also eligible for the scholarship. So these are our partner universities uh, for others program. If you join Help University, we, you can do one plus two, two plus one to Australian partners, to UK partner, and to China as well. Okay. So, okay, these are the major that we offer foundation program, one year, three semesters, okay, and then A level programs, okay, and then uh, business program, IT program, communication program, early childhood program. And for A, A levels, right, uh, we are giving this very generous uh, scholarship to students. 
even you only score one to four A's, right? You can get thirteen thousand of scholarship, and then uh, five A's, fifteen thousand, six A's, seventeen thousand, seven A's, nineteen thousand, eight A's, twenty two thousand, nine A to ten A's, twenty four thousand. If you manage to score nine A plus and above in your SPM or eight A plus in and above in your O level, right? You can get uh, you are eligible for the full scholarship if you join our A level program. Okay, so apart from that, also we provide uh, scholarships to um for SPM level or STPM level or UC levels based on the number of A's that you score. Okay. So later on, yeah, if you all want to know about the detail. Of of this amount scholarship that you are eligible for, you can contact me. So this is our Subang campus, student lounge, discussion library. Okay. Yeah, we have bar service. Okay. Swimming pool and gym, music room, dancing room, and also um, both of our campuses are connected uh, by this MRT through Kwasa Central MRT station and Bukit Damansara MRT stations. Okay. Yes, I, I would like to ask a question. Uh, maybe uh, Miss Kwasanta, you can help to answer. Is um, English uh, language is very important for students to take a law program? I mean, you have to have reasonably good English and Bahasa. I mean, that is expected, right? I mean, in any in any uh, field, if you can't speak very good English, um, it will it will be a damper, isn't it? Uh, for any field, for that matter. I understand the standard of English in this country uh, uh, is not as what we would want it to be, but as long as you can speak reasonably good English and write reasonably good English, that would suffice. Okay, but all students, as required by the by the authorities, uh, by the ministry, including the Malaysian Qualifications Agency, you would have to go through MWEC as well and obtain a band four once you join us. So um, you can join us and then get the English um, qualification. That's fine. Bahasa is equally important because the lower courts tend to be mostly in Bahasa, but there is no regulation or. or ruling that says that you can't speak in English. You can seek permission from the courts and do and still speak in English. But documentation wise and all that, you have to be reasonably good in both languages. All right, I have a few questions from students. Um, can SPM Lever join law school right out, right away or we have to go out diploma at least? Uh, no, you have to do either the A-levels or the foundation or matriculacy or some pre-U uh, program. Any pre-U program is accepted. Now, we do recommend that you, if you're coming in, uh, thinking of joining HELP, then consider the HELP Foundation because the HELP Foundation in Arts, or if you're good in science also, you can do the foundation in science, not a problem. But if you do the foundation in Arts, you're exposed to a lot of information as a very holistic program. They teach you critical thinking. Uh, there's leadership camps as well, but now that there's pandemic, you can't really go on a camp. Uh, there's critical thinking, there's languages involved, you've got to do English, you've got economics, uh, you can do a business paper. Um, so the exposure is there. Yeah? We want you to come with a lot more exposure, then you would feel that um, when you come into a degree program, uh, you know how to do presentation, because they do all that. Huh? They do in terms of assessments, presentations, contact work, and the critical thinking uh, skills paper is one of the best, actually. Um, so it does open up uh, to a wider range, and it's a good one-year foundation program. All right. Then uh, the, um, there's also a question asking, uh, what can the student do right now if uh, she would like to prepare herself for law program? If you want to register for the law program? If you yeah. have already got your foundation or A-levels or any equivalent, you can contact us or you can go through Mr. Lau or Ms. Janess and apply. We have got an intake in May for the Bachelor of Laws and then the UK Degree Transfer Program, the intake is in July and September this year. All right. Um, there's a question here that says, is a law degree a good stepping stone to getting involved in politics in the future? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
you should uh, consider seriously doing law and a master's in public policy. That's one way of uh, getting into uh, the uh, foreign affairs. So there are very good master's programs, even in Cambridge and other universities in the UK that looks at uh, public policy. How much is the fees for foundation in law and help? I will leave that to the marketing department to answer. Yeah, the fees is a 21,600. And there's a bursary as well, right? For that? Yeah, for 20, yes, yes, 20%. Hmm. Okay, so it's below 20,000 ringgit. Yeah. Maybe I uh, we can share with you all later. The, uh, there's also student asking, how is the industry doing now? Is the demand for lawyers high now? The demand for lawyers is always there. And you can also speak to the bar council people because as many as join the bar, there are also equally that many who leave every year. For example, I left, the, I left practice to concentrate on my family life, you know, uh, because I had a baby and all that and I was very much interested in teaching. So I left. So there are people who leave. Uh, and there are people who, who join. So there, there's, uh, there's still scope. There's still scope. And if you ask any lawyer, they'll always say there's still scope at the top. They want good lawyers. And I'm so pleased to tell you, uh, for example, uh, Lee Hishamuddin is one of those uh, pretty large firms and they're doing really well. And uh, alumni, alumni, a few of them are there, a number in fact. And, uh, Two or three of them became partners last year. And they've only been in practice for seven years. So imagine, they're junior partners already. You know, so it didn't take them long to, to get there. And that means they're really good. And there were a large number in Lee Hishamuddin alone uh, that shows that they are recruiting from uh, help students, you know. So that says a lot about the program as well. Of course, these are good students. Huh? We have good, bad, and ugly anywhere and everywhere, guys. Okay? I'll be very honest with you. So a lot depends on you as well. How far you want to go, how well you want to do, and we are so happy to, to uh, be able to guide you. We will do our best in guiding you. But you must have that attitude that you want to go far, that you want to do well. If you have that attitude, we are here to definitely guide you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, there's a student asking, what type of foundation does we need to take for law program? Sorry? What type of foundation do, does we need to take? You for can law do program? any pre U uh, qualification. You can do foundation in arts, you can do foundation in science, you can do A level arts, A level science, you can do uh, international baccalaureate, you can do uh, tertiary, uh, New Zealand tertiary education the TEE or the Canadian pre-university uh, or Australian matriculation or South Australian matriculation, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? But if you come through um, the Help Foundation to us, I think there is a good known as the Career Sense Center where they teach you how to draw up your resume, teach you how to apply to law firms or any company for internships as well. I noticed there's a, there's a question for me here. Uh, can we take business management after Bachelor of Law? Yes, please take do the master's in business administration or in any of the business master's program. You can do that. There are no restrictions unless you want to do something in accounting. Then no, because accounting, uh, the professional bodies will have some uh, prerequisites that you must do in a bachelor's degree. But otherwise you can. What are examples of law firm in Malaysia? Oh, law firm means it's private practice, okay? So when you finish a degree and you uh, have done the bar in England or the CLP in Malaysia, then you can either go into public service. Public service means you can join the attorney general's chambers or you can join the judiciary, okay? So you can become a magistrate. That's the first level. Magistrate, then you have to go uh, up, uh, be promoted to sessions court, sessions court to high court, etc. Or you can go and join the Attorney General's Chambers. They have the criminal um, department and also the civil section, yeah, or corporate section. So then you become the uh, uh, Deputy Public Prosecutor. So you will be working for the Public Prosecutor or Attorney General in Malaysia. 
So you can do criminal cases or you can do civil cases. It depends. And advising the uh, government or advising the various ministries as well. So there's so many pathways that you need to do. But in order to join the government side, you must make sure that you have either the bar or the CLP qualification for you to be eligible for civil service. If you don't join the civil service, you can join the private sector. That is after you finish the bar or, so, or your, gym, uh, your CLP, sorry. Then you go and do your nine months pupillage in any law firm. You can apply to a law firm. You join them for the nine months training. It's like doctors doing housemanship. Just like that, lawyers have to do pupillage, yeah? nine months pupillage. Then only you have a nice ceremony in court. You get called to the bar. Okay. After that, you are a full-fledged lawyer and you can work in any law firm of your choice. You apply. That is private practice. Huh? I hope I've answered your question. So, we Ching. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. All right. Is there any more questions from you all, students? There's a message. May I know the classes for the law degree is going to be held in the Damansara one? We are in the Damansara campus, Hazel. We are not in Subang. We are a boutique law uh, department. We don't like to have large numbers. Uh, we don't believe in large numbers. And uh, we our class sizes are small. Our tutorial sizes are maximum 20 only in a class. Yeah. Yes, Henry So you can uh, go on to a business uh, program after graduating from a law degree. And despite uh, the fees, what's the difference to study foundation of law in UK? You can do your foundation anywhere. If you want to go to UK directly and do your foundation in the UK and then join any UK uh, university, that's up to you. You have to apply. There's no difference. Okay, yeah. This is the fees of our help university for this year. So foundation in arts, uh, uh Janet, yeah. I don't think anybody can see it. Huh? Okay, too small. Uh. Way too small. Mm. I think you just need to increase the size on the top blue on the top. You oh, can you see can the reading book. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a fish. No, I, I, can you all see? I can't see anything, so. Uh, yes, it's not a full page. Read. It's not a full read. page. Oh, yeah. Read, read mode. Uh, you choose the read mode, uh, Janice. You, you go down to the read mode. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is a fish for our foundation. One year, okay. Before yeah. discount, so we'll give you 20% discount. Okay, and these are fees for others program. Okay, later on, the uh, Jinyi, Sherina, and we all will send to you all for the brochure and the fees, all these details, cost details. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any okay. more questions from you all? Right. Uh, before we end the session today, I would like to thank you a lot to uh, Ms. Wasanta from Help University and Janice from Help University to give us uh, such a detailed and uh, very meaningful session about law. And if you all have questions, uh, you, you also can uh, uh, find us later uh, at the contact uh, share in the chat box and before we end uh, we really thank you uh, Miss Wasanta and Janice today and I will show you a video about Help Subang 2 campus um, and then uh, we will end the session today so thank you student and I hope you all uh, still consider to study law if you would like to know more and you can contact uh, any of us here and we wish you uh, stay safe and healthy during this uh, pandemic season and we hope to meet you all soon also uh, so please take care of yourself and thank you so much for today thank you so much and uh, wishing all the students uh, all the best take care stay safe 
and uh, do keep in touch yeah if you have the time drop me an email thank you so yes. much bye thank you so much everyone thank you bye bye We are now at a bus stop outside Help University's Wang Tu campus. And now we are going to have a tour around our campus. Go! Whoa! As you can see, this is our security stand. And here come our waiting area since there is a bus stop outside. Let's move inside and have a look. As you can see, our campus is using tropical rainforest as our principal teams and here is the river light and we got a real tree too. Health University do provide exchange program to our students who are interested to study overseas and this is our student affairs office which students can get information for their study plan. Outside the student affair will be our resting and discussion area for our students which is a student launch. Around our campus there will be quite a few of student launch. Huh? And then here is the example of the booth of our exchange program. We do have some booth and event at our open foyer area. Students can cook or do various activities.
and here come our new building which is H Block. Actually, it is meant for business students just like us. And what makes Health University Subang 2 campus more special is our largest Bloomberg Finance Lab all among Malaysia's university. This is one of our student laws when business students like to hang their masks because of the indoor cafeteria and private discussion room. And here is our business faculty and it is just opposite our student launch and students can easily settle their course issues over here. This is a multi-functional hall and it can be separate into four classrooms or a big hall. Instead of having a canteen, Help University provide a cafeteria which is more convenient and affordable over here. Uh, what I like the most over here is the nuggets. Hey, what are you doing? Shh. Our library consists of two levels. Computers, printing machines, Bookshelf, private study areas, group study areas, personal study lights. Futuristic design. Isolated light capturing box. Glass roof design help to reduce energy use from natural light. Sleeping or relaxing area. Few discussion rooms. Site of online payment, students can pay their fees at the bursary department. And the registry department is just beside the bursary department. Students can resolve their issue of enrollment fees at here. Students mostly get along over here to get some relax, chit-chatting, playing or eating over here. I think that's it, right Orange? Yeah, so this is our tour of our Subang 2 Help University campus. And see you soon guys! Bye! Bye.